Простите, месье, разрешите, месье, я дырку проткну в вашем нижнем белье. Это мушкетеры. И рыцарь пред ним встает на колено, клянется, что верно и самозабвенно прослужит 400 рыцарских лет, что более преданных рыцарей... Hello, who are you and what do you do? I'm uh, Edward Chandrovich, I run Kite Ventures. It's an investment firm. <laughs> Easy as that. Um, a Russian one, right? Uh, we started in Russia, but then we very quickly expanded into Europe, and uh, we invest globally. Okay, let's speak about it more in detail. What is your focus? Which, what kind of types of companies do you look for? And then maybe some numbers, like fund size, how many funds, how many under management, under blah, whatever. So, um, we're not a regular fund. Uh, in fact, it, uh, that's something that differentiates us from uh, a lot of others. We... Um, This, we make different types of investments in right now in global companies. Uh, I think what we look for in companies is uh, that they have uh, global ambitions, that uh, they leverage internet uh, as an inherent medium, so as a as the network, and uh, that they can build a strong brand. And then we invest both uh, into B2B and B2C companies that fit these criteria. Uh, the smallest... Uh, investment that we made was about 50,000. The largest was 30 million. Um, so we're, I, I would have to say that we're size agnostic. Where does this money come from? What did you do before Kite Ventures? So uh, not, all, not all of the money is ours, but uh, a good portion of it is. Uh, before Kite Ventures, I founded a company called Merchantry, uh, which is uh, based in New York and it builds uh, marketplaces for companies like Amazon, Tesco, and lots of others. Uh, and after that, I, um, uh, I was uh, in a founding team of Soup, uh, which is a Russian media company, an online media company, which is uh, famous for being the first company uh, outside of the U.S. to buy an American internet company. And we bought Live Journal in uh, 2007. So we've heard that Kite Ventures started in Russia, now you're also in Europe, and you've personally been to the US. What are the differences between these three ecosystems? I think that it's, it's not really the differences between ecosystems per se, but uh, uh, differences between the regions. Uh, if, you, uh, if you look at um, uh, Germany, for example, Germany has always been very strong in pre precision manufacturing. It's uh, operational excellence, which in the internet translated into very strong execution-related businesses, uh, specifically in e-commerce, which, which has been purely numbers-driven. So um, you, you, see, you see the, the best e-commerce companies in Europe are, are German. If you look at uh, American companies, I think um, Americans in general are much more Uh, much higher risk takers, um, whereas Germans would be more risk averse. And um, um, with uh, with Russian ecosystem, Russia is, uh, and and Americans uh, don't think, don't really really think globally. They think very locally, but then they act globally, because they they think that um, they're trying to solve problems which are inherent to them, uh, to maybe to their small community, but then these problems. It turns out that these problems are actually prevalent worldwide, and uh, they build products to 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 solve these problems, uh, and they get uh, adopted everywhere else. In Russia, it's uh, uh, it's completely different. Uh, it's actually the opposite of uh, of the U.S. Because in Russia, you generally try to address uh, the local market, but the local market is so difficult that you no, no matter If, if you, no matter when you start, it will always take you more time to um, to take care of the Russian market and work out the processes uh, than um, maybe than the German market or the U.S. market. What <clears throat> what makes Russia so special? I mean, I tend to see people that are really interesting uh, interested in in Russia, but it seems that they struggle to to grab land there, as you say, because of the political system, maybe of the culture. What makes Russia so special? So. Um, First uh, and foremost, is, is it is because um, Russia is a special place. <laughs> it's it's a special country. It's neither neither Asian nor Europe, and uh, <coughs> sorry, and uh, um, Russia has been able. If if you translate it into the online world, Russia has been able to uh, establish uh, what you can call a national internet. Um, there are very few other countries that have that. Um, it's China. And 
to a certain extent uh, Japan, uh, to a certain extent Korea. I think it goes back to uh, to some national traits. I mean, both Russia and China have a very um, very strong idea of uh, territorial integrity. It's very important for them to to be tied to the land, to, to be tied to the territory where, where they are. Um, that's why neither Russia nor China were uh, had colonies. <clears throat> I'm still curious, which of your companies received the 30 million? Um, Delivery Hero. Okay, so actually you're also active in the German market. Maybe some other portfolio companies of yours? Yeah, in the German market, it's um, uh, sponsor pay. Uh, Hitfox and uh, Digitalisierten, and we were those are all co-investments with uh, Team Europe, where we c came in early. We were the first investor in uh, in sponsor pay. We were among the first in uh, Digitalisierten and, and Hitfox, and uh, yeah, with um, Delivery Hero, it was actually um, a, a different story. I didn't believe in Delivery Hero first. I actually didn't believe in Lieferheld. Why didn't you believe in it? I thought it would be very hard to compete with uh, Pizza D as a local incumbent player. And um, then, we, then when we started looking globally at the market, uh, I realized that uh, it, it, is a, it is actually a great opportunity. That because the channel switch hasn't happened, uh, because people are still ordering food uh, through telephone, not just online, um, it's, uh, the market itself is tremendous and will continue growing for years. How does it come that you do so many investments together with Team Europe? Lukas Connect, you like each other? I think we like each other, yeah. <laughs> you said that you're pretty agnostic concerning uh, deal size, rounds, focus, etc. Are you also agnostic about your future? Like, what are your roadmap plans? What do they look like? I, I think we, we have certain internal goals with respect to where we want to go. But um, I, I, I don't particularly like to talk about plans. Um, it's um, much better to be surprising. Okay, so we're curious about it. Thank you and all the best. Thank you very much.